Hello everyone, and as promised, it's 6.30 here in Melbourne time, and we are going to transcribe the second chorus of the wonderful uh, solo played by Chris Potter on All the Things You Are in a duet format with uh, the great pianist Shai Maestro. Uh, yesterday we finalized the first chorus, and today we are going to transcribe the second one. So, first of all, remember to uh, subscribe to my channel, to follow me, click on the bell and all the usual stuff that uh, young people do in these days. Um, so, let, let's start. Maybe we can have a listen back to what we did yesterday and whether, you know, it fits. <laughs> Right, and this is the beginning of the second chorus, and we will start working from here. Uh, just while I was revising this, uh, you notice I have added some X's, uh, and because watching the video, and again, the video can be very informative, if you slow down a little bit here, uh, you can see that uh, Chris Potter is playing the G-sharp, note not with the actual g sharp key but uh with an alter alternate fingering which is quite common on tenor and it will be the g sharp played with a low b flat again to give a little bit more honky sound to the to the g sharp and have a you can clearly see his um, pinky, left pinky, active there. I can make it really, really slow so we can focus on that. Try to catch it. Did you see that? It's, it doesn't stop. Uh, it shows us the, the, the two um, suggestions for, for videos. But anyway, we can see that... Right? You can see that his pinky is going down this way. And then again, on the F, we can see on this F, the pinky going on again. Now, if you are familiar with harmonics, you know that F is the third harmonic of low B flat. So again, he is probably hitting or even as a real harmonic. And again, this D is played with side D, open. So it will take a bit of practice to familiarize with this, but all those details are really important. Okay, so let's keep going with the solo. Di do di do do do. Right. Again, stream of consciousness, and 
repeat the same idea once you find the ones that are good and listen to the intervals listen to the sound of the instrument you are transcribing so the last note of that phrase is clearly the low b flat it's the lowest note you can play on a saxophone right this one Bob. Do, de, do, do, do. So this is a minimum rest and followed by a quaver rest. De. Ooh, <laughs> that's a bit too low. De, de. And do the crotchet. Do, 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 C. That's a quaver. B flat, meaning probably. Isn't it the incipit of Misty? Da, 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 look at me right so all those uh, sonic patterns we need to learn those we need to make those links in our brain and go to pick up what are those intervals so when I play the beginning of Misty I would play right so it means that this time I just go down a note. Right? And it's not uh, so difficult anymore once you start memorizing those sounds, those patterns. All you know make sense in your in your brain. And this is also why ti do 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 that is C sharp do ba da do do da major triad first inversion makes sense to you do do oh that's E natural because we are in the do and this is another dotted crotchet do 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 f sharp c sharp do da da do da di da do 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 Right? What what tune is that? Do do di do 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 do. I can't remember the title, but there is a tune. I think it's a Stefano Bolani tune, from memory. Uh, so you might not know that tune, but I think I've played many times. D uh, B natural. Do di da 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 do minor try the second inversion descending. Oh, that's C natural, isn't it? D rest di do do di do di do do di di do do da that's a minor triad descending Of course, if, if you know the harmony, you can also rely on the harmony. 
So we put quavers here, C sharp, D, D, F sharp, D, and that will be F natural. It's better to put a reminder. That's a crotchet. Da, da, that's a quaver. Da, 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 da. Is it like minus seven? Yeah. Da. Yeah. Quaver rest. Da, da, da. I think that's those notes. That's a longer rest. And that's a quaver rest. And that's A. And this is not here. Is that it? Like half of a pentatonic scale. And again, it's a very common pattern, even this one, and we can recognize the arpeggio. So look, from here onwards, he starts working on the arpeggio. The harmony here is, uh, so this is the second chorus, so G minor, C minor, F7, B flat major, E flat major, right? And, and C, uh, sorry, E, what I'm saying? E minor 7, A7, and D major 7. Another bar of D major 7. And guess what? D minor 7 on this bar. Look how beautiful is this line where he changes just in time the major 3rd to <clears throat> a minor 3rd because the chord becomes minor. And then G, um, G minor 7, C7 and F major. So here he plays this pattern. And if I'm not wrong, I can hear that the piano is like dislocated. I don't know if they miss a couple of beats or if it's deliberate, but I can hear that here the piano is actually playing on D minor and playing on G minor here, while Chris Potter is already playing D minor here, but here the piano is still playing on D major. <laughs> And here, and here, where where the bridge begins, they realign. So maybe it's just deliberate that the piano wanted to shift the harmony and displace the harmony and makes you know the phrasing of the saxophone even a little bit more angular. Okay, let's keep transcribing. <laughs> So we need a crotchet and then it will be a quaver, but it's uh, D. All right, you don't like it? All right. And a typical 
bebop line would have D sharp here, but Chris Potter wanted to keep it diatonic. And again, why not repeating the same idea and change the notes according to the harmony? Right? This is the end of the second A, isn't it? Isn't it B seven B minus seven ascending starting from the seven? Listen again. Ah, there's another trick. All right, so yes, it is D A and then F sharp triplets D B natural. G sharp, sharp, da do da, do bo, do bo, E natural, F sharp, F sharp, sorry, B natural, da, it's not tied. This is not tied. There is actually a rest. Uh, C sharp. Ah, uh, C sharp. Do, do, E, F sharp, G sharp. Right, so the trick I was talking about here, let me save. Guys, you need to remind me to save it. Um, the trick I was talking about is that when you play low B on the tenor saxophone, any of these keys here, and I can show you here that you action with your left pinky, also produce G sharp. Hmm? So to go from low B, which is this key here, to G sharp, you don't move anything. You just lift the right hand, right? And it's pretty handy. Right, I think I'm quite happy with that. Uh, so that that's the end of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and eight. Da -da. I think there is a uh, dotted crotchet rest and then a sharp, if I remember well. Da -da -da -da. It's an E. E natural. All right. Uh, we can put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
So here we put a double bar. And this will be the second A. And we are entering the bridge now. Right? Do the perfect fourth, perfect fourth. Tom pa tum 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 da do da dum dum da dum da di do de. I have the Aida march for the perfect fourth. Do di do do dum. Do do G sharp, F sharp, E natural. Da do da do do B natural, C sharp. E F sharp. Oh, it's repeating. Repeating. So we can just copy and paste on sound slice. Convenient, isn't it? Thanks, Chris, for repeating the same bar. So it's this thing. We can copy and we paste and then we paste and then we paste and then he plays B natural C sharp and there is a crotchet rest. Okay, let's check. Right, guys, I, I love this, this point here because listen to the interaction between the piano and the saxophone. Listen how quick Shai Maestro is to get that idea from Chris and interact. <laughs> And he's not moving the harmony, he's not making any change in the harmony. So there is this time where the harmony is suspended in the air and they play this, this sort of contrapunctual line and, and ideas and sort of melodic pedal, an ostinato we could call it, uh, on the pedal. It, it's beautiful because they come from this syncopated line and the pianist is keep going in this bar with a syncopation. And then as soon as the pianist catches this, enters in, in this world. So there's, guys, a lot of trust between the two musicians. And there is a lot of listening going on. That's the key. You have to listen to the others that are playing with you. <laughs> Remember, where are we going? We are going to F sharp major, talking for tenor saxophone, of course. So there is the B natural and A sharp, G sharp, F sharp. Oop, what I did? No, no, I don't need to find anything in the page. D da 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 F. F sharp. B A B B B. C C sharp. Oh. Ding dong. That's B natural. Do 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 B. C sharp. D sharp. F sharp. I think. Let me check. What do you think of my falsetto? I think it's C sharp. 
B flat maybe and A flat sharp here and G sharp to keep it consistent with the harmony and this probably we should write B sharp right so you see this is a whole B section one two three four five six seven and we miss a bar but so far it's just one simple idea da ba da ba do ba do ba ti da 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 Four notes going down, do ba do do, four notes coming back. And here we are going back to the last A section, the first chord of the bar would be G minor and look what he plays da -de -da -da. no ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, I was wrong Is it a G or an A flat? Ah, it's a G. D, A, F, D. Da, te, do, do, E natural, B natural, G sharp. G sharp, E natural. He goes back to E flat. E flat, B flat, G, E. Uh. 
That's a quiver. C. Uh, flat. And here we go to the attic again. D, D, E flat, F, and G, but it's an octave. Isn't it E natural? Maybe let me slow down a little bit. This is a D, and so probably this is a C natural. Uh, so, first of all, is a C sharp. Okay, let me check. Uh, so this is the beginning of the A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here we are in D major. So yeah, I will leave it like that. B flat, C sharp, A, B flat, G. So he's playing like augmented. There, isn't it? Maybe it's C, B natural, and B flat. Yeah. Isn't it? B flat. 
sure about the rhythm. There's a scoop here, let me save, and let me save, and there is a scoop, so we put the scoop there, just to remember. F sharp, F sharp, G sharp. And then G sharp. So, this 
this, I guess, is the end of the A. Uh, the end of the last A, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There you go. And that's the second chorus. Right? And here starts the third chorus, which will be the next trimming. So, um, chords, right? G minor 7, C minor 7, F dominant, B flat major 7, E flat major 7, E minor 7, A7, and D major. D major. Here would be interesting to know what he was thinking here. And this is D major, D major. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm confused. This is uh, E flat major, E flat minor. <laughs> That's right. D minor seven, and. C sharp diminished, C minor 7, F dominant, B flat major, look at that, and D7 sharp 5 to go back to G minor. How wonderful. So I will have a go at the second chorus uh, with him so it starts here I will start from here let's go from top and see how it sounds I want to have a little bit more fun <laughs>
is unbelievable, unbelievable playing. And this is just 80%. He's so good, you know, so consistent with ideas and rhythm and everything. Um, it's really hard to play when, when the piano goes displaced here in this section. Uh, again, my brain <laughs> clashes a little bit, but I love the fact that Chris Potter goes by his way and leaves a little bit more freedom to the pianist to interact in a different way. Uh, I just want to change this, which I think happens a little bit earlier than that. So maybe this is a better way to write it. Right, and this was the second chorus of Chris Potter's solo on All the Things You Are. And I leave the third chorus to the next time. I hope you are enjoying this series. Please uh, like and subscribe to my channel. It keeps me motivated and it would be very nice to see you also live in the chat, interacting, throwing questions. I love questions and we can do it together. Sometimes I need help, you know, guys. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.